you can please put your phones on silent. Uh, that would be super helpful. Thank you in advance. And um, we'd like to just welcome you to, um, to this evening's presentation of Water and Power, California Ice. Um, before we get started, though, we would just like to um, say thank you to a few uh, local dignitaries and luminaries, if you will, that are here with us today. Um, we have Commissioner Pat Fiala, who's on the planning, planning board. And we have somewhere Commissioner and Chair of the Planning Board, David Burnett, which who was here but momentarily disappeared. <laughs> <laughs> we have uh, the MCWD Board, Jan Schleiner. Uh, and we have Commissioner of the Water Conservation Board, uh, Walter Irwin. It's good, and it's good if you all don't mind just yeah, raising your hands because as local citizens, we like to know who's getting involved with us and who's representing us. So thank you. Here's um, David, by the way. So oh, and there's David Burnett. Ending with that, um, we we introduced you, and then you're back. Um, then we have um, uh, Marvin Ann Copper. Um, who is on the MPC board. Did I forget anybody that I don't know? Oh, Nancy, oh, you're seeing her on my face. I'm sorry, I'm so Remind me your last name again. Nancy Selfridge. Pat Selfridge, Monterey City Council. Pat, let's say the name. Past, past Monterey City Council. Past Monterey City Council. And Nancy Selfridge. My apologies. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Okay. Um, so just a little bit about who uh, Just Water is. Um, we are groups and individuals who receive potable water from the Marina Coast Water District and from Calam. And we share a common interest in preserving and protecting a long-term water supply with equity among competing interests. And then what we do is we promote fair and equitable use and development of sustainable groundwater without adverse consequences to the needs and rights of any party. Um, why we're here today is because we've been looking at a theme, which is that if it looks like a rat, smells like a rat, and by golly, it must be a rat. But of course, we never really know until we fully engage. But that's just sort of a little bit of humor here. So today's movie is um, going to address a number of issues, which there are a lot of parallels here on, in, on Monterey County, particularly here in Marina. So there are a few things that you're going to want to watch for. And if you're not familiar with the local issues, um, we're going to discuss those afterwards in the panel discussion. So um, you're going to be looking for what you see in this movie, which is secret closed meetings between profit interests and government officials. You're going to see deception of intention, which is buying land for one purpose, but the real interest is about water rights and ground wells under the land. So in the movie, they're talking about almonds, wine, pomegranates. Here, we're talking about something different. We're going to be looking at, in the movie, corporate investment in local communities. So the for-profit companies giving money and doing social good, meaning investing in education and environment, but having other, motiv uh, other mot uh, motivations. And then the last one is that uh, groundwater is a zero-sum game. And if I take more than my fair share of water, you don't have any. And again, we're going to see what happens when citizens don't get involved until it's a little bit too late, which is really the primary motivation that we're here today, to educate everyone so they get us on the same page, and then get everybody involved, because we really, really need help as a community. And it's your community. It's your right. So um, without further ado, uh, we're going to go ahead and start the movie. And then afterwards, we're going to have two panelists up here to share their wisdom and knowledge with you. And so that's it. Thank you. So, even though the film on some level had kind of a happy ending, people with no water had water. And at least it was nice to hear everyone laughing here to realize that he kept the water going when he washed his hands. And so it's like we're a little bit more awake than he was. Um, yeah, so many things. Um, you know, but that was not really a real solution, it was temporary. So, just to point out. Okay, so we're going to keep things moving. I'm going to introduce you now to our next couple of speakers. And actually, um, one of the things I forgot to say earlier was that um, in addition to Just Water being our sponsor, uh, so too was, is, is uh, Public Water Now, who is led by the uh, George Riley. Um, but we're going to have Hector 
Some of you that know how these meetings go, you recognize these instruments. <laughs> it's music to our ears. Some political organizations, I'll start here, some political and volunteer groups or whatever uh, have uh, packs and they have um, big donors. All we have are people and fleets. <laughs> So what we're asking you to do is help support this community effort, Just Water, and uh, be generous if you can. There's a lot of volunteer effort going into these programs, and a lot of work being done at the PUC level, at the community level, as a citizen's group advocating for certain things before the Water District as well as for City Council. And coming up is a big advocacy before the Coastal Commission. The Coastal Commission is going to be at the uh, CSUMB on July the 13th, 14th, 12th, 13th, 14th. At 9 o'clock in the morning, there are, uh, the first thing in the morning, the first thing in the meeting is public comment. And there's some attempt to organize people to go there to speak about the slant wells and the lack of feasibility analysis that's being done and some problems around that. Anyway, you'll hear more about that, but that's just adding on to it, please. Let me just add one more thing. The next, um, uh, Sorry, I just want to know. Um, the event is going to be working with um, GSA and Sigma issues. So if we want to be sure, we don't want to spend the time now to tell, tell you about all of our upcoming events. Um, rather, we would prefer you to sign up at the back and we'll send you when we need engagement and what you can do. We're not going to bombard you with emails, I promise. You can also like both uh, organizations on Facebook. Okay, without further ado, let me introduce you to both of our speakers. Um, this is uh, Hector Cortez, as you can see above, first member of MCWD Water Board, and on the Economic Development Commissioner, is an Economic Development Commissioner of uh, Marina. And then here we have George Riley, who is the co-founder and managing director of Public Water Now. Uh, he's also the technical on the technical advisory committee to the Mayor's Monterey Peninsula Regional Water Authority, and. Um, on the Monterey Peninsula Water Management District Revenue Oversight Committee. So, without further ado, um, Hector is going to draw some of the very real connections from what we just saw to local issues. All right, so good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Herbert Cortez, and I'm the recent member of the Marina Coast Water District. Uh, as you all know, the Marina Coast Water District did not approve what I'm saying, so I'm not speaking on behalf of the board. But I am speaking for me, which is Herbert Cortez, a passionate resident of the city of Marina. So I want to let you know that what comes from my mouth is basically from the heart and sincere. So at least for me, because we're short on time, I really want to know who our audience is so we can tailor our statements and our comments. So how many of you are from Marina? Okay. And how many of you are from the peninsula? That includes Seaside and Monterey. All right, and then for the lucky ones, how many are from the Fort Ord community? Oh, well, that's good to me. Okay. <laughs> so for our peninsula folks, you guys know exactly what it meant when they talked about privatization of water. And if you haven't, then most likely you were shocked when you saw this chart this afternoon and you saw the increases. So in the last year, Calam has increased your water by 62% for single family households. And that increase is not going to stop, right? It's not going to stop because according to them, there is a huge demand for water, right? And they need to basically meet that demand. You say 62%? 62% what, the price? The rate increase, yeah, for a single okay. family household. We sell it to 62% of water. No, 62% of the of rate increase. So I'm actually interjecting one thing. So um, unless it's for clarification, we're going to just let each people, each person go through what they want to present, and then we'll do Q&A afterwards. The reason why I set that up as far as 62% increase is because they're looking, the cow for future profit generation, right? They're already in Seaside, they're already in Monterey, in Carmel, right? And where they see the next big thing is going to be for Oregon, right? And so what you have is basically the Monterey Peninsula Water Project. That is their desalinization plan that's happening right now. And for those of you who do not know about it, it's basically this huge plant, according to them, they are taking water from the ocean, breaking it down, and giving us potable water. 
According to them, because there's such a demand of 13,000 acre feet for tourism and for anyone else, I'm not sure who else would want that much water, um, they need it. So what that leads us to is basically they need to find that water and they're going to get that water regardless of who gets hurt. Who is getting hurt? We are getting hurt, right? Just not city and marina residents, it's the whole public when we lose our public water rights. And so what I really want to say is, before we go to George, is that the way they're doing this is very strategic. They're giving us misinformation, right? They're giving you fear that there will be no water for the peninsula, right? Where are you going to get your water? We can't build these foundation plant. Where are we going to get the water? Two, for the people that are here in Marina, don't worry about it. Nothing's going to happen to you. We've done this super positioning modeling that says nothing happens to you, right? And then the last thing is people like us, people who work at the Marina Coast Water District, 8 to 5, they are they're looking at the data. They are hydrogeologists, they're engineers, and they're showing that our groundwater is being depleted. And it's not going to help by bringing this huge plant that's actually taking subsurface water and affecting our groundwater, the 18400 aquifer, which is already overdrafted. We're seeing that. But you know how they're attacking us? They are giving misinformation through elected officials that you've elected and we've elected and organizations to attack Marina Coast Water District. Now, I'm not saying that because I'm a Marina Coast Water District, so I, I'm not saying that because I'm not saying that because of that. I'm saying that because if you look at the data, the data is unique to Marina Coast Water District. They are looking for third-party people to look at the data, while Kyle Lamb is looking internally for that same data. So those are the three things I want you to understand. They're strategically looking at us in, to put fear in you, giving us bad information, and pushing it through. And George will now probably talk about more detail how that's affecting all of us. Before we go there, I just want to point out one thing that you said that was very relevant to our, how we move forward. You said you were here speaking on your heart, on behalf of your heart. And that's really an important distinction. We're here because of care. Not yes, maybe being pissed off, there's a reason to be, maybe. But also, if we move from a place of care, it does also help shift the way that we're working. So, well, thank you. This is a good turnout, and I'm really pleased to see as many people from the peninsula here. The marina, I'm glad you know that we're neighbors. <laughs> show, show of neighborhoods. Uh, two, two quick things about the movie. One is uh, the Monterey Agreement had nothing to do with Monterey. So, just so you know, it was housed here. It was downtown Monterey somewhere. They were meeting in a hotel, and the meeting was here. And that's how Oslo Accords and those kind of things get their name. It happened in those cities. Um, and it was all about ag and Central Valley. Uh, second thing I want to say is I think it's a cautionary tale. It's not exactly what's happening here, but the issues about big money and uh, big investments and big returns all play out with the Calam system, with Calam. And the, the free enterprise side of the arguments that have been presented does take place when there's land to buy. Because what they're doing is buying land and then actually getting access to the water that's under that ground. Uh, what we have in the Monterey Peninsula is different. It's a monopoly. So there's no competition. They're not really buying up land or farmlands. But the cautionary tale is big money making a big investment for the access to water. And I totally agree with uh, what was said about uh, Fort Ord and Calais. I think I think the cover crop, my version of what the movie's talking about, about great vineyards being cover crops for water. I think the Monterey Peninsula water supply problem is the cover crop for future growth of the Calam system into the Fort Ord area. It doesn't mean we don't need the water. It doesn't mean we shouldn't get some water from somewhere. But what's happened is Calam has not in some competitive way, but in warlike way, invaded your community, taken over an asset that's in your district, your water district, with no water rights, with changing the program design, which which we think and like the initiative we want to make before the uh, public, the uh, uh, California Coastal Commission, what we think they've done is hoodwink the number of the permitting authorities on what's happened. We all know, and some of us have been around, we all know that the issue that Calam presented and the state water powers, the state water agencies, the power brokers of you know, state water power, public public agencies agreed that taking water under the ocean was a good idea. 
expensive, but a good idea. Cal-Am has now pulled their intake pipes away from under the ocean. Now they have it under the land. It's inland. It's completely in the aquifers. Your aquifer, the Marine Coast aquifer. And, and so there's been some misleading information about what Cal-Am presents to the public, what they presented to the PUC, what they approved to go ahead, to go ahead under, under those kind of arguments. Cal-Am has changed the design, and they have no water rights, and they are having a, and their project is failing. And you, you, just mark, you just mark the words from what you're hearing today and what you're probably going to be hearing more about is that the Cal-Am project is headed for the dumps. Because if nothing else, they have no water rights first. Second, there will be litigation. It's going to be delayed. Now, on the peninsula, we're concerned about CDO. A lot of people are. And the CDO is the, it's the state order called Cease and Desist Order. That order said, find new water supply or we're going to penalize you ration your water. They have the power to do it, they can do it. The fear is that that will happen. And therefore, they're driving blindly, I think, many of us think, they're blindly going ahead with Calais project. Even though it has no water rights, it's likely to be litigated, there's some misinformation about where the actual intake is and what the impacts are of, of seawater intrusion. And why do you think the city of Marina has joined this whole process. Why do you think Just Water got formed? They're all getting educated. They're all getting educated. And suddenly, we got a far more active group of people looking out for their own interests. And my interest, and our public water now interest, is lower cost. It's not no water. It's not no growth. It's affordable water. And we've gone down the road to the most expensive type water possible, desal. Now, potentially a failure of all those investments. And we all get, we've been stuck every time. Every time there's been a failed project, we've been stuck with the bill. The investors have not put in one penny for every failure of Cal Am. And that's why we're fighting. We're just, we're just a cash cow. One other point, on, last point on cash cow. Cash cow. If you don't think we're a cash cow, look at American Water Works stock. Just look at it. And then you'll wish the hell you bought some 10 years ago. <laughs> because I just looked recently, about 10 years, about five years ago, it was worth $34 a share. Today it's worth about $75 a share. That's in about five years. That's more than double in about five years. And we're stuck with a Cal Am system that's, that's, we have no water from them, no, no new water from them, and the bills that are close to the highest in the country. No wonder they don't, they don't want to leave. No wonder they like what's happening. They like us. They like our community. We are a cash cow. Until we wake up to options that exist and we have available to us, we're going we're gonna, to, our pocketbooks are going to, you can look in, you're not going to see as much there. Anyway, what happens, I think, in the long run is people wake up and people take action. And I think that's what Just Water is all about. That's what Public Water Now is all about. People can speak. People have a voice. Often people don't think that it means anything, or they don't think they really have a place. But you do. The problem is, if you don't think you do, you won't act. You think you can't find City Hall. Oh, it's too big. Oh, it's over there. Oh, it's on Thursday. I've got... you got to show up. You have to show up. People power will beat money every time. If it shows up. Questions, David? So uh, I, I don't understand. Carolyn says that the desal project is taking water out of the ocean. Why would they take water out of the ground? I mean, it's a desal project. Why would they take water out of the ground? Well, they're going to take water where they can get it. And the reason why they want to take it under the ocean is that the water rights issues are pretty loose if it's under the bay. There are water rights issues around it, but the state controls that, and the state has jurisdiction over that, and there's not a build, not a build up of, of, of case law around taking water from under an ocean or under a bay. There is a boatload of case law if you take water from under the ground, because property owners have the dominant right over that water. And Calan has no water rights. They haven't even applied for water. And they expect to get a project approved when there's no water 
I don't know why they've got attorneys working on this. We don't think they're very smart. But we don't think that their engineers are very smart because they've had three failed projects already, and this is the fourth one in about 10 years, and this is headed for failure too. Well, so keep in mind that the data that they're submitting is saying that their pump right there, the desalination plant, is taking brackish water, which is basically seawater uh, mixed in with fresh water. If you take the water from the groundwater, our 180, 400 base subbasin, right, is brackish water, has already mixed in Can water. Can you just, sorry, for people who don't know what that is, can you explain a little bit what that is? Just the subbasin? Yeah. So the subbasin, like, so we all, so underneath us is groundwater, right, and we have a subbasin, right? So basically when you dig down, just like the video showed, that little straw is going to hit the 180, 400, and then if you need to go further, then you go down, and then you go to the, our 900 aquifer. So it's our little aquifer system. So it's right next to the sea. So that little sub basin, right, has is brackish water. It's mixed in with seawater intrusion that has come in with fresh water. When the reason why that's such a key issue is because when they look at the data, right, they're gonna say, oh, we pull this ground, this water from the ocean, but actually they pulled it from the groundwater. And they're able to then mix the numbers and say the salinity count has now decreased because of that. It is the perfect spot to put a fake uh, seawater intake plant. It's the perfect place because your groundwater already is mixed in with salt water. So you use less, basically it costs less for you to pump that water and then make the, the numbers are going to show themselves, but as opposed to you going out into the ocean. So that's a critical aspect of it. Um, I'm just wondering, shouldn't there be like a rule that the desals should have to dig, if that's the case, like a two mile, they have to be two miles out in the ocean or something like that to force them to actually get fresh water from somewhere or it has to be surfaced water? Because I would think that if, they're, if that's the case, then if you push them two miles out, then they have to actually do like a drilling rig, just like an oil rig, and they would be forced there to bring the water from that point if there was a law of perimeter distance. The, the state law that regulates that uses the mean high tide lines. So whatever the mean high tide line is on the coast. So it's right on, it's right on the beach. It's a moving line, but in general, that's a line. And the law covers, if it's beyond the mean high tide line, it's considered ocean water. Can Monterey run a rule that they can't do it in that and put it's something a, like that on the existing, that that they have to go out state, farther? law that allows it to happen. It would have to change. So, uh, it's a state law. It's not a local law. I'm going to just interject. I, I don't want to be Republican, correct me if I'm wrong, but neither of these folks are lawyers, and the questions that you're asking are maybe a little bit out of the scope of this, this um, conversation. With that said, we have survey questions here, and also lots of information in the papers. Survey questions to get you to come get involved, to ask those questions and help move the conversation forward, and then information. So, uh, one more second. Any other questions? I just want to respond to him that the, uh, the Cal Lab came to the city of Arena requested a permit to put their slat well out there. They told the city that they were going to put it in subsurface ocean. And so uh, the city turned it down. They went over the city's jurisdiction and went to the Coastal Commission, and the Coastal Commission granted them the permit. That's why we want you to come to the Coastal Commission in July to their hearing to protest it because we want to tell them you made a mistake, you were duped by Kellen, they're not in the subsurface of the ocean, they're in the marina's fresh perch dune sand aquifer and the 180 foot aquifer, aquifer which is marina's only source of fresh water. This just occurred to me today after I read the paper yesterday that Cemex has to close can, up. Can you um, speak a little bit louder? <clears throat> I don't know if my voice allows me on. <laughs> after I read the Herald that Cemex closes in 2020, it dawned on me. Why couldn't Cal M buy that property and put a diesel well on there? Who would stop them if they buy Cemex property? People stop and think that could happen. And I grant you, they will happen. That's there are no dummies. They've there are already no put dummies. it there. They could buy that land. But they've already put it there. Pardon me? That's where the pipe is. So they bought a property already? No, so they've just, already so filled there. 
you just spoken to the uh, the concern that we're working with. Yeah. So this is part of why it's took time to get engaged because we don't want to see that happen. So yeah, good point. Good Thank you. If we don't. Yeah. Well, that's why that's why we're here to get yeah. people engaged so that doesn't happen. Yes. Two real quick things. One, I think Cal Am has proved beyond any doubt. That Sorry, Cal can you speak up a little louder? I think Cal Am has proved beyond any doubt that Cal Am cannot be trusted. And the question is, uh, how feasible is, is desalinization? I mean, is it feasible to happen in the next year or two years? It is. Yeah, how feasible. Well, from the little that I know, I do think that uh, someone did say that it's going to be in litigation. And so I, I don't think it will be feasible as far as that. I think there is a lot of you know, pushback on that end, specific, specifically you know, with the Marina Coast Water District, you know, our, we have a five-year long-term water sustainability plan. And that desalination plan basically takes our plan and throws it in the garbage, basically. We've done a great job of pure water moderating, trying to figure out how to put recycle and brackish water back into potable water. And we're building the infrastructure. And we believe strongly that the information used as far as the modeling and the data is inaccurate. And we made the comments from the draft EIR, which are public comments that you guys can see. I definitely recommend that you guys go to the Marina Coast Water District website and really take a look at us in a different fashion, in a different light than you did a few years ago. There's a lot of information, a lot of third party information there that really supports what's happening as far as the misinformation being provided by Cal App. So to answer your question. Hold on a second, both Kathy and Jay were gonna well, say something. I was gonna say something, yeah. gonna say something about it's feasible to do direct saltwater uh, desal, but not the slant well plan that's being promoted. So if they put this in Pacific Grove, or in Monterey, they could be doing just what uh, Sand City's doing and be providing water in their jurisdiction. But that is a, a, a plan that they did not pursue or give much information in the DDR. I just want to clarify, right now there's two processes going on. One, all of us commented on the draft environmental impact report. We're still waiting for the California Public Utilities Commission and the NOAA group to, to see whether they approve that, right? So that's going on this line and we're waiting and waiting. All of us had weighed in on it. Then now they've got this other project, evidentiary hearing, where now they're, they're trying to say, well, what if we scaled that project down? and we scale it down to a smaller thing and we also um, are talking about they're talking about uh, modular components to be approved later on so that means you approve a small one but you have the leeway to keep asking for the, the more of it as time goes on and so this is really slick stuff and that's why we all have to just kind of you know, get the information when it happens and show up to say this is not right when it when we are ready to say this is not right. But these are processes going on right this minute, guys. So other questions or comments? Yes. I have two questions. Didn't Marina do a desal and they shut it down because it was too expensive? Yeah. So Calham's gonna do the same thing then? <laughs> Ten slant wells. But right they out there can do in the it cheaper, or they don't care about no, the they're just going to pass that cost on to the, the rate payers on the peninsula. Plus a 10% profit. Oh, man. So that At was least. question one. Question two? That was two. Well, okay. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? I, I want to I want to kind of wrap my, my head. I don't want to wrap your heads around. Why is uh, the Monterey Peninsula in Marina? Why is Marina complaining about the peninsula getting water supply? And I think there's a there's a circle here that needs to be kind of closed or, or uh, explained a little bit. So we're on the same side, even though there's very distinct differences about what what the issues are. Um, Calam is a very expensive company, and they're charging an arm and a leg, and we're tired of it. So they've come up to Marina to solve our problem. Being in Marina creates a problem for you. So you're not opposed to a water supply. I, I'm saying this, I don't know what you're really opposed to or not, I mean, but that, that's not my point. my point. My point is, it's not a water supply issue on the peninsula that you're involved in. You're involved in an invasion that not only contaminates your water supply, because they're creating seawater intrusion, they're taking the rights of your own jurisdiction, the city and the water district, which exists in their jurisdiction for you, 
and Cal-Am is preempting that. Then look at the long range. Cal-Am is sitting pretty. If they get their project, they're sitting in an excellent position to, to substitute, to, to provide the water for Fort Ord, the Ord community, and substitute them for the district. And I just want to add one little piece. American Water Works has an expansion policy called tuck-ins. T with a T. And that's designed to acquire small water systems in small communities. Small is, designed, is defined by 10,000 customers or less. That's yours. We've got about 8,000 customers. And if they're sitting in the middle of this jurisdiction, then they're sitting very, very pretty to leverage their way and just, just move you out of the way. I mean, you, you've got a lot to protect here. And, and it's not your guest the water supply for the peninsula. You've got a lot to protect. We need a different water supply location. That's the issue. Find another location. They eliminate the problem in Marina. They still can provide water. There are lower cost options with other locations. Count Allen has picked the most expensive location, the most contested location, the most controversial location, and the most expensive way to do it. There's a lot of, pick, a lot of things wrong with that picture. And there are so many people don't care and are stupid. <laughs> but neither stop. That part's <laughs> <Either stop. laughs> So, getting rid of Calam doesn't do anything about where we're going to get the water. Where are we going to get the water? If, if, what, what's, what's the solution that you propose for a few years I've got five different solutions. <laughs> I'm not sure about George's solution, but I know the Green Coast Water District has a plan, a long term plan. And it goes through, through two phases with pure water, which will total 6,000 acre feet. We believe, right, and George is right, Marina Coast Water District does believe that there is going to be need and will support the need, but it has to be done legitimately. And so in the pure water system, we do plan for about 6,000 acre feet, 3,000 first phase, and then second phase, another 3,000. That's our long-term plan. We don't believe that demand is going to be 15,000 acre feet, which is what cal is saying. We think the demand is going to be less around that range. So will there be water? Yes. There has to be alternative ways to provide it. Marina Coast Water District is being a leader among many districts here to try to do that. But you wouldn't know that because all you hear about is that we're being sued for this and that. And that's really what I want you to, to see and everyone, the public, to see that. Marina Coast Water District is a leader among the area when it comes to long-term sustainable growth for our water. Yeah. Those are our two phases, 6,000 acre feet through and, the pure water. And the lawsuits were a long term, too. Yeah. Nothing yet. Let me just list the six options, five options. There's six. Calam is an option. They can leave this neighborhood and go to Moss Landing. That's number one. There are two other entrepreneurial efforts of, of, of desal plants in Moss Landing. Yeah. Both are at less than half the cost of desal. The People's Project and the Deep Water Desal Project. They're still, we're going to learn in a few months really how viable they are. They're both on the verge of getting an EIR out from the streets. Uh, but there are three desal projects, part, largely open ocean intake, screened open intake. And the EIR is for those who The EIR is that famous environmental uh, sequel I talked about in the movie. Uh, environmental report. Environmental impact report. Um, if they get those out on the street, they're viable projects. So you got three desal projects located in the North Moss Land. Moss Land. Then you have winter runoff of the Salinas River that's in the neighborhood of hundreds of thousands of acre feet that's not being used. It could just be pulled off. It's the cheapest possible option. That's one of my favorites. The other two are around uh, this, uh, pure water Monterey ideas, uh, the, the pollution control agency, the wastewater. There are two ways they can increase the amount of supply. One is there's going to be more source water out of Salinas, wash water, lettuce water, and vegetable washing, washing water. Uh, there's more water there that could be captured and included into a processing. Also, they discharge about 6,000 acre feet a year every winter when the water's not needed, they don't have plant capacity for it. So they have two source options that they could package uh, for helping us get over the water, the water you know, hole, you know, hole rate. That's six. If we kill, I say, if we get rid of the deep, uh, the sand well project, we still have six on. And all of them are less expensive than the one we're on right now. All of them. All right, thank you. So we're at the eight o'clock hour.
And so we just want to say thank you so much for being here with us this evening. Um, again, if you want to stay in touch and keep abreast of what's going on, there's email, sign up in the back, Facebook pages, and thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.